Ready? Okay, today is Friday, right? Yeah. Friday, August 12, 2016. I'm uh, briefing the two interns from the RRI on how to interpret the X ray. Now, to interpret the X ray of the dog, this dog, no? this dog, one must know the history. So, this is a male Shih Tzu, not neutered, 10 years old. Okay, so you have to state the patient first. So, male. Shih Tzu male, not neutered, 10 years old. Okay, now what the, what's the complaint? The complaint means from the owner. The complaint is he passes blood in the urine now and then. So on August the 9th, which is National Day, they, they consulted a vet and the vet gave some medication and then that's all. So they came back to, to me because I'm the original vet. And uh, so Dr. Daniel saw this case. And uh, the thing is, you can see whether, whether there is bladder stone by palpation, okay? Abdominal palpation. Now when you do abdominal palpation, if the dog feels a pain, the, the back will be hunched. Okay? Now, I can feel the bladder is quite full, but not very full, just full. And then there's another lump behind. Another lump behind, but not very obvious. But there's a lump there, and it could be the prostate. Prostate now, because the dog is not uh, not uh, neutered. Now, as you can see, you can check dog neutered or not. But physically, you have to check because sometimes neutered, you can still see the scrotal sac, but uh, of course, nothing inside. Huh? So you, you feel it, okay? So it's not neutered, okay? So now we go to X-ray now. Now X-ray normally we take two views, huh? We take two views. The lateral view, lateral view, and the ventral dorsal view. You take two views so that you can see the the various angles. Because if you take one view, sometimes you cannot see. Okay, so I'm going to the lateral view first. The lateral view of this dog with passing blood in the urine. It's called hematuria. Okay, the she's 10 years old male. Not neutered. Now, what are the significant findings of this uh, uh, X-ray? This, this refers more to the urinary system. Urinary system, basically, of course, it consists of the kidney. Now, this one we can't see the kidney clearly because of the it's not enlarged, and also there are no stones inside. Huh? So the kidney should be around here, and if it's enlarged or inflamed, you can see something like this. Yeah? Something like this, or like this, huh? you can see a bit radio dense, okay? So, in this case, you can't really see the kidney. So, I go to urethra, urethra is here where the, where the urine goes in, and then in the middle dog, of course, urethra goes here and goes around the pelvic urethra and then goes down to the ospinis. This ospinis where where the Urine comes up, okay, comes up from here, and then it comes up to here, okay. That is the the, the passage of urine. Now, what do we see in this X-ray? Okay, I start with the kidney first. Kidney, of course, nothing to be seen because it's not enlarged or inflamed. Especially, you can see something like this if it's enlarged or inflamed. Okay, so now I, I go to the urethra. Urethra is nothing, and the ureter. This is ureter. Then the next one is urethra. Urethra is after the urethra. And the urethra, urethra, of course, wait, so, so I, I just start with for you again. So the kidney, and then urethra. Urethra, then it goes into the bladder, okay? The bad bladder, the, the urethra goes through there. Now this is the bladder. It's not very full, but you can see. Eh? So there's a bit of radio density, so the urine must be cloudy a bit. Eh? Then, now there's another interesting one here, it's quite big. Now this one, you can see it's quite circular. So this one is the prostate enlargement. The prostate normally you can't see at all, but now you can see. Okay, it could be like this. Huh? And uh, if the dog is neutered, sterilized huh, or castrated, there wouldn't be any enlargement because it's normally due to old age and testosterone. Then so this is prostate, prostate enlargement. And then after that, uh, you can see that uh, 
the blood and urine could be due to the prostate inflammation uh, and as well as like, the bladder inflammation. Okay. So that's why the dog reverse blood in the urine, blood in the urine now and then uh, due to inflammation uh, and infection uh, of the prostate and the bladder or the bladder and the prostate. So I look at the, the ventral dorsal view. The ventral dorsal view now, the bladder. You can see that here is the bladder. It's not full, so you don't see much. But the urine is cloudy. Yeah? There's the bladder and the prostate is, is uh, behind it. Uh. Prostate behind it. Now, the kidneys. You can, can see the pain all of the kidney there. But it's not inflamed or enlarged. This is the left kidney. The right kidney, you can't see clearly because of the stools. Uh. So now, we, we, we look at the, any stones. Uh. Now, these are all spinnies. Okay, there's no stones here. And then the urethra is around here, but you can't see any stone. Stones means those are uh, radio opaque, radio dense, uh, white, something like that. Stones would be, I mean, the white specks uh, or crystals or big ones. So, so there's no stone in the kidney, urethra, urethra and bladder. And so, so we confirm that the cause of the blood in the urine occasionally is due to infection of the bladder and, and the prostate. Okay, bladder and prostate, and uh, that that is the evidence from the X-ray. Okay, the bladder and the prostate hypertrophy due to old age. Huh? The, the prostate is enlarged. Now we can see that the dog has been licking his foreskin, the prepuce. This is swollen here. That's because this uh, dribbling of urine and blind urine is irritating to the dog, so the dog keeps on licking it. Huh? Okay. So now we look at the, the cat, okay, because the cat one, now because of the time, time factor, so I will just go through the whole thing. Now this cat is, a, is a only two years old, two years old. Okay, this cat. This is the dog. Okay. Oreo, okay, the cat. Can you see it now? Okay. okay. Right, come on the dog again. Okay, the audio the cat. So just see the whether it is this is the previous picture of this dog also, okay. Now, where's the cat one? Now, the cat one is... I don't know how, how, how maybe I have to click. How do you get a cat now? I can't get a cat out. Somewhere I click. I click the cat's name and this fellow come up now. Okay, I click the cat's name. Oreo, uh, and then I click below. Okay, the dog comes up. There is, there is surprising, okay, so I'm sorry to reset. The reset, okay. So I will just go through with the interns, the cat has diarrhea. So that, uh, at least they learn how to see the exit, okay. So now we go to the second case of today. Now this, this Oreo, the cat, it's only two years old uh, and male, uh, neutered, uh, not neutered. He always goes out. He always goes out and uh, he strays. Uh. So now the owner found that he had very smelly diarrhea. Today, uh, very smelly stools, blackish grey stools. So, so uh, it came to top by vet. So we recommend an X-ray. Now before that, I palpated the cat. I felt a very long large sausage lump, which I suspect was uh, the heart stool, the constipation. And uh, so x-ray confirms, as you can see, these are the stools hardened already, you see? Dehydrated, dried up. Huh? And uh, this is most likely the descending colon. Descending means it, it goes into the rectum. Area. Then you can see the transverse colon, but not so hard. Then, okay, so we finish this one. Then, uh, so basically, it is, 
in, infection of the colon, okay? And uh, the diarrhea is probably the end part of it. Right? Okay, so now we go to the next one. This is a lateral view, so we go to the ventral dorsal view, okay? Ventral dorsal view now. This, this ventral dorsal view, you, you got to go direct. Ventral dorsal view shows the anatomy of the flush intestine very well because normally you don't get to see such a nice uh, transverse colon because it's distended with hard stools, you see? So you can see the transverse colon. And then uh, after, after transversing, descends, that is descending colon. The ascending colon is here, huh? ascending colon. But ascending colon has no stools, so you can't see. So descending, uh, the transverse colon has stools, they're getting stuck here. And then as it goes further down to the descending colon, to, to the rectum, huh? you get more and more dehydrated, so it becomes hardened. You can feel it, abdominal formation has a big, the biggest sausage on sale in the supermarket, that's about the size. Huh? And uh, this is where the diarrhea comes in, a very smelly, loose, loose diarrhea here. Okay, so the ventral dorsal view illustrates very well the extent of the constipation uh, from, from uh, transfer, transfers to descending. Now, the lateral view, where you can see the stomach, now the stomach will be here. Okay, the stomach, but it's, it's not very uh, clear. This may be just the, the colon as well. Uh, this could be the colon as well. Because uh, this could be ascending colon full of gas bacteria. And uh, this, 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 this one uh, shows you a very good anatomy. I think you are studying anatomy, right? You are studying anatomy intestine. So you know what transverse colon, right? And uh, this is colon. Okay, now, now I'll show you just on the dog. Huh? When there is no... When there is no constipation, when there is no constipation, you can see. You cannot see actually. Huh? You cannot see that the colon in fact the stools. In fact, colon will be more on the gas, huh? with gas. So you can see that there is no infection of the stools. Huh? So I like, see the ventral dorsal. On the ventral dorsal, you, you can see actually the descending colon there. And then you see, it's only filled with gas only. Okay, and then the transverse colon. Uh, here the stomach can be seen clearly uh, with food. Still with food. Huh? So the, the cat might be eating still, but uh, no, this, this one is a cat. Uh, no, this is a dog. The dog is still eating. There's really nothing wrong with the other stomach on the field. Okay, finish it. Okay, finish it. Okay, yes.